Okay, guys, I did a little work evening up our lowest flowing runner, which is number eight. What we wound up doing is I did some work on the inside, right? It's limited because the flow comes down the plenum and has to make this tight turn. And it was really tight because there's bolt bosses and all kinds of stuff in there. We'll show you in a bit. And this cutout is for the, the large HEI distributor. We didn't change the port on the cylinder head, but it is a different port on the FPIS intake. It is the number 8 runner. And this is the number 8 Arizona Speed Marine runner. So, all of this is going through my ported 58 throttle body. I'm going to take this apart. I'm going to show you what I did on the inside. Is everything completely finalized? It's pretty close, you know. I may see a little something here and there that I don't like, and I'll work on it. I did want to snake my boroscope down and make sure we got, you know, no obstructions anywhere or anything that's that didn't match up right. It's always good to uh, take a look at it after it's all assembled. Yeah, you know, you have to realize that the way this bolts up, even though it has four fasteners that holds it in place, there is a little bit of leeway in which way which way it can be bolted up. So it may not be perfect the way it is. I mean, I could change, I could change the alignment and flow it again. But um, I'm as crazy as I am. That doesn't sound like a lot of fun. Okay, guys, kind of interesting. This was the the same intake port on the cylinder head, but it was the number one runner done up, and it was the number one runner in the the plenum going through my BBK and we we maxed out we got like 130 at 300 we got 232 at 0.4 and 235.5 at 600 so it's right in this area that we're we're maxed out now I work on the number one because I figure it's one of the lowest flowing runners it turns out number eight is even lower I didn't realize that before I started this project but now I see why so I did what I could on it is it possible I could do more? Yeah, maybe. I'll take a quick look at it with the boroscope and see what it looks like. But I think we're pretty close right here. If we notice, if we take a look at our flows, right, we got plus, plus, plus. It actually works better at the lower flows, but it's all minuses up here. Is it too far out of whack? It's, it's a little bit less than I'd like to see. It's a little bit less than I'd like to see. All right, at 300, it's not bad. It's pretty close. What is interesting, though, is if I, we compare our swirl numbers here to our swirl numbers here, right? We only have a few spots that are minuses or equals. We have more swirl everywhere. So the question is, do you guys really think there would be much horsepower difference between two cylinders that are being fed like this? You guys can answer that in the questions. I know what I think. I don't think they're going to be more than a couple horsepower apart from each other. In fact, most manifolds aren't even <laughs> nowhere near that close. Especially if you do a dual plane that has the lower H runners that are smaller. Not even close. Huge discrepancies. I have videos like that if you want, guys want to look at them. In any case, this is probably just going to be a short, manif uh, short one. You know what I'll do? I'm going to pull that and take off. And you can see the work I did on number 8. And uh, then we'll end this up. All right, guys, this is what we've got. You can see in some spots I didn't really take off a lot. Now, I can take off more metal out of this back wall here. I could take more metal out of this. But that wall is actually curved the wrong way. It would be nicer if, if it curved the other way, but it doesn't. All right, we've got a big bolt boss here. A lot of metal can be taken out of here. I took out a lot already because that ruins the radius coming into this runner and then we have this vacuum port now the stock vacuum port stuck out all the way out to here I'm machine that down no reason to have that that long try to give it some kind of a radius coming out you know, the other side is the way unfortunately the way it worked out is it's actually quite close to this radius that this so this fin they put between the two runners. See, my plenum doesn't have this this fin. 
So it makes it very difficult to put a radius on this side into the plenum. I don't want to take it out though. I think it's probably there for a reason. It probably has to do with the uh, buffeting of, of the runners, right? Because as you have as you have the air coming down to this runner, it goes across these other runners and uh, can cause a buffeting effect in that runner. Kind of like uh, ram tubes on carburetors, right? That's why they actually can make more power if you put an air cleaner on them. Andy did a great video on that recently, uh, Andy Wood. You should definitely check that out, Unity Motorsport. He's doing a lot of cool stuff lately. So, in any case, could I do some more work to this? Yeah. You know what? In your comments, let me know whether I need to waste any more time on this. Well, you think we're probably pretty good where we are. And uh, we're at six minutes, guys. It's going to be a shorty, but I'm good with that. Thanks for hanging out. Have a good night.